Now to an important medical alert. Fish oil supplements are constantly touted for their health benefits because they contain omega-3 fatty acids. But a new lawsuit contends they may contain something else too, PCBs, industrial chemicals that were banned back in the 1970s because they caused cancer and birth defects. We asked Elizabeth Leamy to look into this for us. Beneath the surface of waterways like the Chesapeake Bay, small filter fish ingest polychlorinated biphenyl compounds, or PCBs, that were deposited there decades ago by electrical plants and other polluters. When environmental activists tested 10 different fish oil supplements, they say every one contained PCBs. According to California law, people should not be exposed to more than 90 nanograms of this carcinogen a day. But the results showed three of the 10 contained much more than that. Nature made cod liver oil and now foods salmon oil and double strength cod liver oil. People are being exposed to PCBs through these products and they're not being told. Attorney California. David Rowe filed suit against eight big fish oil producers and retailers, including CVS, GNC, Omega Protein, and Rite Aid. The industry is aware of possible PCB contamination. Some supplements even come with labels saying PCBs have been removed. You can protect yourselves by shopping for the ones with the lowest levels. CBS, Rite Aid, and Omega Protein all declined to comment on the lawsuit. Solgar didn't respond in time. And GNC, Now Health Group, Twin Lab, and Pharmavite, maker of Nature Made, all said their fish oil supplements pass strict tests and comply with all state and federal laws. For Good Morning America, Elizabeth Leamy, ABC News. So are these supplements safe? Joining us is our senior health and medical editor Dr. Richard Besser. A lot of concern here, should there be? That's right. Well, I, th I think people should always be concerned about possible exposure to toxins. PCBs are, are dangerous chemicals. They're, they're linked to cancer. But I wouldn't overreact to this. This is a lawsuit. Uh, it had very minimal testing that was done, one, one sample from each product, and they found some elevated levels. But these levels are above the threshold for California for, for uh, labeling, but they're not above the threshold that the World Health Organization would say is dangerous to your health. So that's a little bit different there. Right, that's a, that's, that's a little bit, bit different indeed. So you think the, the health benefits of this, you know, the fatty acid outweighs the risk? Well, there, there's clearly a lot of data to show that, that these products are important for people who have heart disease. If you've had heart attacks, if you have heart failure, they will greatly reduce the likelihood you're going to die from those diseases. If you're an otherwise healthy person, who doesn't have any health risks, the data is a little, a little thinner there. And so what you decide to do may be a bit different. We, we, you have talked about it. Others have talked about how omega-3s are, are good for most of us. So how do we yeah. go about getting it into our diet? Well, I, I think if, if you have heart disease, uh, it wouldn't change anything you do. Talk to your doctor if you're, if you're concerned. But the benefits are, are, are clearly there. If you're in a group where you don't have those risks and you're concerned, you may decide, OK, I'm not going to take the fish oil supplement. I'm going to follow the American Health uh, Heart Association mm -hmm. guidelines and start eating fish. And if you have one to two servings of fish per week, six ounces, seven ounces of fish, fatty fish, things like salmon, tuna, you're going to get as much of the uh, omega-3 fatty acids as is recommended. So just by eating that amount of fish a week, you really don't, you don't have to do both, really? That, you don't need to do both. That's right. And the interesting fact, the Food and Drug Administration is responsible for monitoring PCBs in fish, but no government agency is responsible for monitoring PCBs in a, in a nutritional supplement. Mm. So, you know, you have at least one watch, watch group that is there looking after your fish. Usually people take the supplements because they don't like the, the taste of fish and that, but taking the supplements, you taste, the, it, it tastes fishy. Yeah. You know, if you're not a fish eater and you really can't stomach fish, you are going to have to go for a supplement if you're in one of those high-risk groups. And there, talk to your doctor about which products might be most sure. beneficial. I think more testing has to be done before you can say that. You know, one sample out of a, out of a bottle mm. um, may not tell you over the long haul which product is really going to put you at, at greater exposure to those PCBs. But right now, I wouldn't change much of what I was doing. Okay, Rich, thanks so much. Appreciate you coming in. And you can get more information about fish oil, what's good, what's not, from Dr. Rich Besser at our website, abcnews.com.